The 2005 Allegheny Campers will always be remembered as the state champions. You know, they finished 14 and 0. Mike Shaw says a typical set of three bases like these will cost about $200 and it can be very costly to continue to maintain a field all season long. The Garetti Gales have something in mind tonight. They want to win this championship trophy. Organizers say 59 golfers are registered to compete. The winners of the senior team will receive this beautiful cup. Golfers say they can't wait to tee off here in Greenville. The Washington Wizards open up their second round action against the Miami Heat on Sunday afternoon in Florida. Miraculously, the shot went in, and so Goretti starts the season the way they want to start it. And you see the fans, everybody is excited. Senior forward Travis Garrison watched in street clothes from the bench as the Maryland Terrapins defeated Wake Forest 90 to 86. His teammates say they were determined to make baskets. Without Travis, it's a key rebound and key inside player. We need other guys to step up. Our big men came in, played extremely well on the boards. Uh, you know, got good shots. Everybody in the locker room just stuck together. We know Trav, 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 not that type of guy. So we, we really know what's going on. What's going on is Prince George's County Police charge Garrison with two misdemeanors. Authorities say the allegations stem from an incident prior to the basketball season. The case is still under investigation. And looking at the cover of the Maryland Terrapins basketball media guide, you can't miss senior forward Travis Garrison against Wake Forest. He was sidelined due to ongoing legal concerns. His teammates say they were thinking about him and they were trying to get the victory for Travis and to help the team move forward. You know, you know, if, if one man goes down, you know, we still have to pick it up. You know, James played pretty strong in the game. And, um, you know, that's what we have to do as a team. You know, when somebody goes down, you know, we just have to pick, pick each other up. Everything happens for a reason. You know, uh, Travis will be high. You know, he'll be back in the court playing again. Travis Garrison returns to action with the Terps on Saturday, January 21st, 8 p.m. at home versus the Hokies of Virginia Tech. In College Park, James Hill. NBC 25 Sports. The Baltimore Ravens used a 44-yard overtime Matt Stover field goal to help defeat the Pittsburgh Steelers 16-13 your final. After the contest, Stover told me he was ready to help seal the deal. I look at it as an uh, a awesome thing to be, to be able to do with the team being 2-7. and seven, To be able to come back and uh, put together a win was a great, great opportunity for this team to show true character, not to lay it down for the season, come, come give our fans a, a win that they so desperately needed to gain their faith back in us. A pound push, see if we can make a couple throws here and there and uh, get Matt into a position where we know he can make a field goal like that. So uh, um, you, you do what you can. We can go back and rebuild on this and you know go back to work on uh, Wednesday and, and try to uh, capitalize on our mistakes that we did have in this game and, and just try to better ourselves and, and just try to get win, more wins after win. I think uh, what we've done today, um, some, some plays we made today, uh, the catch by Randy, uh, Mark made some great plays, uh, you know, so we can build on that and, and hopefully we can take that into the um, Cincinnati game and not just let it be a one game thing. With the victory, the Baltimore Ravens improved to 3-7 on the season. Next up for the Ravens, a trip to Cincinnati to face the Bengals next Sunday. In Baltimore, James Hill, NBC 25 Sports. Hagerstown Suns head groundskeeper Mike Shaw is passionate about his high-maintenance task. His ongoing challenge is keeping the baseball diamond ready to play ball. The mound is the most important part of the game. Um, we can't have any of our pitchers getting injured, so we can't have any kind of holes out here at all. We want this to be as hard as it can be, uh, so they're on stable footing at all times. The Suns grounds crew spends countless so hours grooming the field all year long. Suns management says preparing for opening day can present many operational <laughs> challenges. Including you know, finishing up, putting up any billboards, uh, some signage around the ballpark, uh, menu boards, just for some directional signage, it's real helpful around the ballpark. We do a final check of all the seats, the cup holders. Um, there's a few spots even where we're making sure the paint's still drying. Uh, and mostly it's just operational at this point. Wild Suns general manager Kurt Landis works extremely hard on putting the final touches together. For opening day, the Suns ground crew is also working their best. Mike Shaw says a typical set of three bases like these will cost about $200 and it can be very costly to continue to maintain a field all season long.
When you first walk in, we want you to look out at our grass and go, man, how did they do that? How is their grass so green and mine at my house isn't that green? That's our main goal. If that happens, we've done our job. A job Mike Shaw and his grounds crew look forward to continuing for another Suns baseball season. At Municipal Stadium on opening day, James Hill, NBC 25 Sports. Allegheny High School captured their eighth state football championship in school history. Alco stopped Snow Hill 41 to 20. Players say taking state is a dream come true. But I'm glad we won it. It proves, it proves us to everybody out there that don't think Allegheny was a, a caliber team that was good enough to win states. It shows everything. All this year we've, we've been the second half team. We know we come out fired up. Sometimes we start out slow in the first half this week. I mean, we started out, we were good. We were up both halves. Second half, though, we just had the momentum and we took it to them. Allegheny head coach Tom Presscorn says his game plan of stopping Snow Hill's running back Ben Tate, who was headed to Auburn University, was executed perfectly. You know, they went 100 miles an hour after that him and wrapping up. And he's a quick and he's a strong back. But uh, I tell you what, we, we gang tackled and we made the right decisions when we needed to. We're going to brag. I mean, that, that's how when you're 17, 18 years old, 16, some of these kids, you're going to brag, brag, especially the area teams. And that's just the best part of winning and going 14 there. Nobody can say they're better than you. For the rest of our life, this team will be remembered as one of the best in Allegheny history. It's an awesome feeling. The 2005 Allegheny campers will always be remembered as the state champions. You know, they finished 14-0. Next season, the campers will try to defend their state championship and make it back to M&T Bank Stadium in Baltimore. James Hill, NBC 25 Sports. It's a game Ravens fans will never uh, forget. And there you see two of the best, Deion Sanders and Brett Favre, hanging out. First quarter, third and goal. Kyle Bowler finds Todd Heap for this two-yard touchdown pass, and it was 7-0 Ravens after the PAT. Later, second and seven. Watch Mark Clayton line up behind the scrimmage, get the snap, and run around the right side into the fun zone. PAT good. Ravens lead 14 to nothing. Third quarter, Kyle Bowler makes it look easy. He drops back and threads the needle to Randy Himes. Beautiful one-handed catch there. PAT good. Ravens lead 21-3 and the route was on. Ravens win big 48-3. Your final Ravens host Minnesota Vikings Christmas night in downtown Baltimore at M&T Bank Stadium. Boys basketball, the Martinsburg Bulldogs showcase their newly renovated gymnasium tonight for their annual tournament. Let's go inside the home of the dogs where the bullies hosted the Garetti Gales. There he is, legendary coach Koki Robertson providing instruction and the Bulldogs were pumped up. First quarter, Garetti executes their ball movement to perfection. Big Gene Johnson pulls up and knocks in the shot there. And it made it 4-2, to two. Dogs. Still first quarter, a Q sighting. Q Montini. Matheny goes in to the rack for the layup there. It was a tie contest. Closing seconds, first quarter, Kevin Brashears finds his man, Andrew Chambers. He knocks in the basket there for the buzzer beater. 12-11, Gales lead. Second quarter, the big man, Big E, Emil Payne, scoring in the lane. Martinsburg would win it by a final score of 68-53. Santa Claus came through the Inner Harbor and filled the Ravens with lots of joy. There you see the Ravens running out of the tunnel there and ready for action. Second quarter, Ravens safety, Ed Reed, boom! You better be more careful anytime you come to Baltimore. Always trademark defense that you know when you see the Ravens play. Second quarter, Brad Johnson finds his man Jermaine Wiggins and pay dirt, and Wiggins will do his Wiggins dance. Look at that, celebrating in the Inner Harbor on Christmas night. 14 to seven Vikings third quarter watch Kyle Bowler drop back and thread the needle to his rookie wideout Mark Clayton and he is gone 47 yards to the fun zone 17-17 tie contest fourth quarter Kyle Bowler on third and eight check out Bowler he throws this bomb and Derek Mason blows up he makes the catch touchdown for the Ravens on the play Ravens win it 30 to 23 the final and they are smiling in be more circumstances, all you can ever ask a group to do is to step up to the challenges that it has, and this was a challenge.
In College Park, the Maryland basketball Terrapins have a New Year's resolution. They want to win more games, earn respect, and go dancing to the NCAA tournament. On New Year's Eve afternoon, the Terps hosted VMI, Virginia Military Institute. Let's go around the Beltway inside the Comcast Center for all of the action in this one. There he is, the coach Gary Williams. First half, Terps use great defense to produce great offense. Chris McCray, boom, he goes airborne there for the two-hand jam, 8-0 Maryland. Still first half, another VMI miss becomes a Terps highlight. Check this out, DJ Strawberry, boom, for the dunk, 13-0 Terps. Strawberry had a very good contest today, and then later in the first half, uh, Strawberry will knock in the three ball there, and as expected, Maryland gets past VMI by a final score of 99 to 68. That's a look at sports for the 11 o'clock hour, and a lot of basketballs were bouncing tonight in the four-state region. No kidding. Thanks so much. <laughs> of course, we will be right back.